Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on the sine rule. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can use the sine rule to find missing angles or sides of a triangle. So, first thing, what is the sine rule? Um, if you remember, the area of a triangle is 1 half BC sine of A or 1 half AC sine B, 1 half AB sine. There's several, there's three different ones, okay, depending on which side, um, which angle you have and sides you have okay if you set all of these equal to each other which should be true and then we simplify we end up with this so one half bc sine a one half ac sine b one half ab sine c if we divide all of those by one half to get rid of the one halves and then all of them have two sides on there so if we do a b and c we end up like on this one here we have the one halves cancel out the B's cancel out, the C's cancel out, and if you're left with sine A over A. This one here, the halves, the A's, and the C's, and you got sine B over B, and then this one, we end up with sine C over C. Okay, so this is simply the sine rule. Sine, sine of any angle over its side, um, over its opposite side, should equal the sine of any other angle in the same triangle over its opposite side. Okay? We look to use this rule when we have a side and the angle across from it. Okay, if we have the two, if we have two sides and the angle that includes it, that's when we use the cosine rule. If we have an angle and the side across, that's usually when we use the sine rule. So let's use that to do example five. Find BC, this side here, to two decimal places. So we have two angles and one side and we're trying to figure out what this right here is right bc so here's what i like to do that we have this is the one side that we have and we have these two angles what we want to know is we want to know what this angle is right so good news is we can figure that out because we know that all three of these angles add up to 180 so if we do 27 plus 111 we get 138, right? So now we take 180 minus 138, and that gives us 42 degrees. So we now know this, that this is 42. What I always like to do is I always like to circle my angle and side across, and then my other angle and other side across. So I know that to set this one up, it's gonna be, uh, say, sine 42, Sine of 42 over 13 is going to equal sine of 27 over the side that we're looking for. Let's call it x for now. Okay. So then when you have a fraction equaling another fraction, we simply cross multiply. And really the quick and easy way to do this is cross multiply and divide by the leftover piece. Okay. So if we bust out our calculator, 13 sine 27. So the 13 times sine 27 gives us 5.90 divide by sine of 42, divide by sine of 42 degrees will give us what that last side is, 8.8. .8. So BC equals 8.8, .8, in this case, millimeters. All right? All right. One last example, but before we do that, let's take a quick little comedy break. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, last example here. Determine the size of angle BAC to three significant figures. So B to A to C, that's this angle here, right? So look, we have this angle and the side across from it. So well, let's just do say sine, in this case it's A, sine A over 11. It's gonna equal sine 71 over 20, All right? So simply cross multiply divide by the leftover and that will give us what sine a is going to equal all right so 
11 sine 71 gives us 0.945. Um, let's, oh, it has 1 sine 71. Silly. 11 sine 71. 10.4, divide that by 20. And then sine A is 0 0.52. Oops. 52, right? Um, but we want to know what the angle is. So what we got to do is we got to do second sine of that answer. So I'm going to do second sine, second answer. And that will tell us what the angle is, 31 point. Now it says the three significant figures. So first, second, third, 31.3 degrees would be what angle a is okay all right um that's all there is for the sign rule if you have any further questions please feel free to ask in class thanks